Hello beautiful Perception Trainers people and welcome back to another video. So if you haven't watched the last two videos, I would recommend that you do that because that is setting the foundations for everything that the rest of this Perception Trainers 2.0 is, is going to be, which is just all around what I have learned about my own traumas and this last year and a half journey that I've been on with recognizing that my childhood was abusive and that it caused a lot of things in me that needed to be looked at and needed to be healed and still need to be looked at and and integrated and and the the big tools and the big insights that I've learned from having had a very unhealthy household that I grew up in and what that caused me to think and what that caused me to believe and how I'm coming out of that. So in this video, I want to talk about conditional relating within unconditional love. So I think that most people out there who, who follow the work that I'm doing, who watch these videos, if you're watching these videos, you probably identify yourself as an empath, as someone who can feel the emotions and feel the, the, the pain and the sorrow and the, the sadness and all of this of the people around you. And this was a big part of who and what I am and was in my childhood that skewed a lot of things for me. So what do I mean by that? In my childhood with my mom who was abusive towards me, I always could empathize with her. I, I, again, I could always see that she was in pain and that she was not happy, that she was depressed, that she wasn't getting what she wanted out of life. And whether she was actually blaming me, so there were definitely ways and times and days where she did actually blame me for that. She, she would sit at the foot of my bed at the end of the day when I would cry to her with how hard my day was because kids were mean and I was having all this emotional sensitivity and I didn't know how to handle that and everything was hard and scary. And she would say, you're ruining my night. I, this is too stressful. You need to stop being so needy. You need to stop being like this. You're making me unhappy. I developed just like this deep core shame of needing someone to comfort me in in the pain that I was experiencing and seeing that asking for that caused her pain. And I just felt like I was ruining her life. And I felt so shameful and so guilty that the needs and the wants that I had were causing her pain. And then as I started to grow up and get to these places where I was learning how to, um, I was making improvements in my diet, I was making improvements in my life and it was starting to kind of heal my body and seeing that, okay, like when you take responsibility for the things that are wrong with you, when you take responsibility for the things in your life that you don't like and you make changes, that's a good thing. It sets you free, you, you get better results. But in her mind, when she would come to me with her problems and tell me what was going on with her, and I would say, okay, well, here's what you can do about it. Here, here's where you could change. Here's where you could maybe alter your behavior in some way. She would say, you're making me feel bad about myself. You're making me, you're, because in her mind, she, all she could hear was if, if there's something she can do about it, that means it's her fault. And she needs to hate herself for that. It, if, it's, if it's at all her fault, if she's at all participating in the pain she's in, it's all her fault and she's horrible. And that's what that means. So I could never understand why my suggesting, well, why don't you try this or why don't you try that? You're making me feel bad about myself. And then I thought like, oh my God, I'm such a horrible person. Why am I so terrible? Why can't I ever just listen to her empathically and, and validate her and tell her it's not her fault and what's wrong with me that I can't do this? And the, it went so far as to getting to the point where, like I say, in my adulthood, she was being abusive towards me in the sense that every time I would talk to her, it would turn into some form of shaming me, some form of blaming me, some form of I'm making her unhappy, I'm making her miserable, this is my fault, I can't solve her problems for her, so what's wrong with me, I'm the cause of her problems, 
or she was just sharing her problems with me and then I told her she could do something about it and that made her feel bad. And it just was all of this, holy shit, I am so awful. I continue to make her feel bad about herself. It's always my fault. And further than that, the, so, so when I was getting abused by her and she was blaming me for having needs, blaming me for having desires, when she was telling me that what I needed from her was too much, that I was too emotional, too needy, I needed to learn to provide for myself, I needed to learn to be by myself, I needed to do all these things. But then when I would do that, and then I'm not dependent on her anymore, that would also freak her out. And she would, get, she would try to sabotage me because she needed me to need her. She wanted me to need her. And her only way of knowing how to get her own needs met for that were to be manipulative. Because deep down, I feel she doesn't feel worthy of love. She doesn't feel like she is fundamentally deserving of being loved. And so her only way of getting love is to manipulate and to force people into believing they are dependent on her. And so that was being done in a, in a way in my child where she made me feel so terrible about myself and like no one else was ever going to love me and that there were all these things wrong with me so that I would continue to believe that she was my only source and then she could pull love away from me and then I could feel terrible about myself and then that would make me want her even more and that would make her feel good about herself and it was this whole cycle. And, and I could see always that it was coming from her pain and I felt like I was causing her pain. And then even as an adult, as I was starting to say, okay, this, this behavior is abusive and she's being terrible to me and all these things, I still couldn't get past, yeah, but it's because she's hurting. I could always see that she wasn't a bad person. She didn't want to hurt me. She, I, I don't believe ever that she sat there thinking, how can I hurt her today? How can I ruin her today? She is trapped in fear where she needs love and she doesn't know how to get it in any other way. And I was always just thinking if I could just love her enough, if I could just be good enough to her, if I could just provide the perfect love, the perfect support, the perfect whatever, she would stop being in pain and then we could have a good relationship. And there was a lot of, and then this is what I started to do with all of my relationships. I started to become a codependent doormat for pretty much everyone in my life. So many people came through the perception trainers who just shit all over me and abused me and, and verbally attacked me and verbally took me down for no apparent reason when I would just be sharing a teaching, sharing an insight, sharing whatever. And, and, and if you follow my work or if you're in my work, you will know I, I never tell people what they should believe. I, ne I am never there to tell people that they are wrong for believing what they believe or they're wrong for doing what they're doing. I'm always there to say, if what you're doing is causing you pain, if what you believe is painful, let's question it. It's probably wrong. And I know that a lot of people feel a lot of deep shame around that, that if we're wrong, we're bad and we're horrible and we have to kill ourselves and that's just awful. So that you're gonna attack anyone who tells them that they're wrong. And because again, in my perspective, Finding out that you're wrong is the best thing ever. Because if you're wrong, that means that thing that's causing you pain, that thing that you believe is causing you pain, that, that way that you think you need to live that's causing you pain, the, the solution that isn't the solution, it means there's another answer. It means there's a way out. If I'm wrong and I'm in pain, that's the best thing ever. Because if I'm correct and I'm doing everything right and I'm in pain, that means there's no escape from pain. So to me, admitting that I'm wrong is the greatest thing ever. But then not seeing that when I would point out, say, okay, well, if you're in pain, what are you believing that's wrong? And they attack me. I would just be like, well, what the heck is going on? Like what's, and again, I would just think I am such a terrible person. Why did I trigger them like that? I shouldn't have said anything. And then I would just do it over and over again and just hate this part of myself. And so it was just like over and over again, I was just accepting People coming to me for advice, people coming to me for spiritual guidance, people coming to me with their pain. 
and me saying, okay, well, here's what you can do about it. Let's question it. Let's look at it. And then them attacking me. And then me thinking, yeah, no, that was me. That was my fault. I'm a terrible person. I shouldn't have pointed it out. What was wrong with me? Even in the context of they came directly to me, they asked, they gave me consent. <laughs> what do you think I should do here? And I would say, well, let's question this. Let's look at this. What if, what if this is wrong? What if your foundational fundamental belief about this is incorrect? And they would verbally attack me. And I would say, well, I'm a terrible person. And, and so there was so much of this, I believed that I needed to be this perfect person who was, could see that everyone is just in pain, that no one is hurting me on purpose. No one is attacking me on purpose. And I could always see that. I, I, I've never ever existed thinking that people were bad fundamentally or that there are just bad people, that there are just abusive people, that there are just negative people. I don't see that. I don't, I've never seen that because I've always been able to see, yeah, well, but look, look into their childhood, look into what happened to them. They were abused. They got here for a reason. They are this way because they're hurting. They are this way because they're hurting. They're attacking me because they're hurting. They're attacking me because they're scared. They're coming to me for advice because they don't know what to do. In their childhoods, they were abused. In their childhoods, they never learned how to learn from pain and pleasure. They are afraid because they feel like they're dying because most of us are. And we don't know what to do about it. And everything that everyone else is doing is also wrong. And we start to just think, there is no answer. And so people come to people, spiritual people like me, and they're like, you look like maybe you have some sort of answer. Give it to me. And I'm like, okay, well, it's going to start with questioning your reality. And then everyone freaks out. And I'm like, well, yes, of course. You're already fucking scared out of your mind. Everyone who's living most of the time is just scared. We're scared. We're wounded. We're triggered by everything that everyone says. And we're already in so much pain that when someone says, okay, well, yeah, it's because the way that you're living is out of alignment with truth. And not seeing that ultimately we're all living out of alignment with truth and it's not our fault. And that's another big, huge thing. It's no one's fault that they were abused. It's no one's fault that we're living in ways that are totally out of alignment with reality. Like, I understand, we look around the world and we're like, okay, well, what about these people who are like working for pipelines and doing all this shit? Like clearly um, destroying the environment, clearly destroying the environment, clearly um, just, just uh, taking advantage of people groups, clearly, clearly causing harm. How can we look at them and say they're not bad people? Because it's so obvious that what they're doing is terrible and they're just so selfish. They're, se they're taking advantage of people of color. They're taking advantage of people of different sexualities. They're taking advantage of, there, there's genocide, there's war, there's terror, there's all of this power hungry, everything's money. We're, we're willing to rape the earth and rape each other and to just get whatever we, whatever we think we need right now. And those people have to be evil. And to me, I'm just like, no, they're not. They're not evil. They're scared. And they, that, that fear. So this is again, what I learned from my mother is that her reactions to me were not this big scheme plan to like overarchingly ruin my life. That's not what she was doing. She was just in the moment. I am so scared. I'm going to just do whatever I need to do to get my need met right now because I'm perceiving that my need isn't be being met. I'm perceiving that I'm being attacked and I'm going to attack back. I'm perceiving that I don't have enough. And so I'm going to just continue to take and take and take that it doesn't matter who I hurt because I am so scared right now that I'm not going to get what I need, that I just have to do it. The consciousness level is like they can see about two inches in front of their face. They are not seeing the percussion, the negative repercussions of their actions. And even if they are, they don't have the capacity to own that because they already feel so shameful about themselves. They already are so afraid and so feeling that, that they didn't get enough and there isn't enough and they're not going to get enough that that is why they're acting like that. Even if you can cognitively explain like, look, 
you are taking advantage of a giant group of people and they are suffering because of your actions, all they're going to hear is you're bad, you're wrong, and they're going to shut down and keep doing what they're doing because now they're even deeper in fear. And that's what fear is, lack of information. And then that forces you to just do your habits over and over again from the microcosm to like the individual person to corporations to whatever. It's all just working on there isn't enough for me because in my childhood, I wasn't given enough. And now I just have to do whatever it takes every single minute of every single day to get what I need, to get what I want, to survive. I have to keep accumulating because it never feels like enough. And that's why we are where we are as a humanity is nothing ever feels like enough because we were in scarcity as children. We didn't get the love, we didn't get the support, we didn't get the care we needed. We were rejected, we didn't learn how to learn from reality, we didn't learn how to learn about our emotions. We were all shamed and blamed and abandoned and rejected even if we had every ounce of physical need met. We're not just a digestive system. Just because a person was rich and had a whole bunch of money and, and all of their physical needs were met to the nth, if they didn't get time with their parents, if no one paid attention to them, if they weren't being fed the information that they were inherently valuable, they are in debt. They are, they are deficient in what they needed and they are in a state of fear. And so that being the empathic way that most empaths feel. We can feel that everyone is just in pain. And so that has led to these teachings that we just need to be unconditionally loving and unconditionally accepting of this behavior. Because if we can love them one, enough one day, they will change. They will be better. And you're not spiritual. You're not mature. You're not good enough as a spiritual person. You're not really transcended. If someone else can hurt you, if someone else's abuse actually hurts you, you should just be able to get to a place. So this is what I believed, that I should be able to just get to a place that my mom can shit all over me every single time I talk to her because she's just in fear. She's just hurting. It's not her fault. And I should be okay with it. And I should be mature enough to see that it's just pain and to just love her unconditionally and to just continue to be in that relationship because she's my mother and not say anything about it, not do anything about it. Just keep working on myself to get to a place where I can be okay with it. And that was the massive mistake. That is what I think is the massive misunderstanding in spirituality. We are not understanding what actual unconditional love is. So here's what I have learned about what actual unconditional love is. Number one, this reality that we live in is cause and effect and there are rules and laws to how this reality functions. So for instance, if you drink poison, it is going to cause damage to your body. I don't care if you're in the most high vibin amazing state of love, transcendence, it's all an illusion, the body doesn't it matter, I'm just an alien from Pleiades or whatever, state you're in. If you drink poison, it will negatively affect your body. There's no such thing as getting to such a mental state that you can drink bleach and it doesn't negatively affect you. And I know there are going to be spiritual people who argue with me on that and I'm going to say, okay, well, prove it. <laughs> Show me the person who can actually drink bleach and not get sick, and I will say, okay, I was wrong. Because up until now, everyone who thinks that they can just be in a positive state and be in their high vibin vortex, whatever, <laughs> high falutin state and eat chocolate cake all day and not get cancer, we're, no, everyone's dying. Everyone's getting sick, everyone's getting diseases, no matter how positive you are, it's not because of negative thought. It's because there are laws to how this reality functions. And if we break ourselves against those laws, you cannot break a law. Not in real reality. In real reality, because we are all one, because we are all connected, and because our consciousness has control over this vehicle. That's it. 
When we break a law, we break ourselves. When we break a law, we break ourselves. That is where pain comes from. So if we can start to understand that, that is where pain comes from. We are breaking a law of reality and it is hurting us. So again, this is part of the confusion about empathy is that when empathy is working properly, when we hurt another being, it hurts us. And this is not a moral judgment. True empathy has nothing to do with morality. It's amoral. It's this is simply breaking the laws of reality. When I slap someone to get something and it hurts them, it hurts me. Cause and effect. It's not wrong in that I'm a bad person that I slap somebody. It's that's how the law of reality works. I cannot stab my liver to give my kidneys a better chance. It's all one. When I stab my liver, I affect my kidneys. And as much as it's difficult to understand like this teaching of we are all one, okay, that doesn't mean that you and someone else are actually the same person. It means you're a part of the same body. And therefore what is happening to that person all through the butterfly effect is affecting you. So that's true empathy. Understanding that we are all one. That everything that I do to myself, I do to everyone else. Everything I do to other people, I'm doing to myself because there's nowhere else for the thing to go. It's all an effect, right? So again, I stab my liver, eventually with all the things that happen, because of that damage, because the whole body is all connected, it's gonna make its way to the kidney and the kidney is gonna suffer because of that. So that's empathy. So then when we start to understand that the one part of this reality we have complete control over is ourselves. I don't have the power to make someone else see something, to make someone else do something, to make someone else this is pain go away. So that again is the, the unconditional love first starts with, I only have control over myself. I don't have the power to change anyone else's way of being. I, I understand that if I'm in pain, it's because I'm breaking myself against the law of reality which means if everyone else is in pain, that also means they are breaking themselves against the laws of reality. And just because I can see where and how someone is breaking themselves against the law of reality, I can see, okay, you feel bad because you keep eating chocolate cake every day. And that is simply breaking the law of reality. You can't eat food that isn't food every single day and feel healthy. So it's not bad or wrong to do that. You're completely entitled to eat cake for the rest of your life. There's nothing wrong with that. You are still worthy of love. You are so worthy of respect. You are so worthy of having everything you want, but you are going to suffer because you're breaking a law. And so if you don't want that, you have to make a different choice. And it's, again, I know that this is really hard for us because I think a lot of us have just associated boundaries and rules and structure with inhibiting our freedom. And so we don't want to believe that there's a structure to the universe. We don't want to believe that there's a way that things actually work and that you, a way we have to be in order to not be in pain. But I think what we all will start to understand, or what I've at least come to understand, is that what, the more that I align myself with the laws of reality, the more free I feel that I don't actually feel inhibited by how the structure functions when I've accepted it and I'm going along with it because it feels good. And that is going to be another thing. And, and the more I understand about the structure, the more I understand about how reality functions and the more I live within that, the more creativity I actually have, the more I actually am able to figure out what I want and what I, and that's just another video and we can talk about that later. But, there is a structure and I can't make someone stop breaking themselves against reality. But again, I have control over myself 
And I, being a part of everything, if I am creating chaos in my life, if I am choosing destruction, if I am destroying myself, there's a ripple effect of that to everybody else. So that is not good for everybody else. So this is where that idea of martyrdom and I'm going to just sacrifice myself for the greater good isn't reality. The liver cannot sacrifice itself for the greater good of the body. The liver has to operate not in one or the other, right? It's not the liver takes more than it needs and that then is detrimental to the rest of the body. The liver can't take less than it needs because that then will downgrade its function because again, us martyrs, we've got to understand this. You cannot not get your needs met. You cannot sacrifice yourself and function to your highest degree. That is something that I needed to learn so hard. There is no such thing as me being my best self, giving everything that I am capable of giving being everything that I'm capable of being when I'm sacrificing myself because that is not how it works. It's like in the body. If you don't get enough vitamin D, you are not going to produce proper enough cholesterol. That cholesterol is not going to turn into your hormones and you are not going to be healthy. There is no way where your body just somehow adapts to not, to not getting its need met and then is functioning optimally without getting its need met. Nope. If you have a deficiency, the body functions suboptimally. period. That's how it works. The longer you go without getting your needs met, the more suboptimal your function becomes. That is how it works. So you want to be someone who's actually serving the highest good of all people and you're allowing yourself to go without what you need, you can't. You won't, and you will see it. You will break down, you will crash, you will go into a hole, your giving will start to become manipulative and weird. That's how that happens. When we're not taking care of ourselves and we're thinking, I'm gonna sacrifice myself for the greater good, that's how we become manipulative. That's how we become the narcissistic ego guru. That's how we become the person who's so depleted, they have nothing to give the resentful giver. That's how that happens. And as adults, we need to start to recognize that we're doing that to ourselves. And I learned that I was trained to be a martyr. I was literally trained that you have something I don't have. You have insight I don't have. You have wisdom I don't have. You have some special gift that I don't have. And that's been part of my whole life. And you have to give it to me. Or you have to get rid of that and make that quiet and make yourself smaller so as not to make me feel bad about myself. You have to help me. You have to change me. Give me what you have. And I tried to give what I had over and over and over again, thinking that it was just something that I was doing wrong. I wasn't saying it right. I wasn't explaining it right. That, and I would just be neurotic in my work and neurotic in trying to help my mom and neurotic in trying to help people on the internet and just like, Oh, why can't I get them to why can't I get them to see and the thing is I can't get them to see I Don't have that capacity. I cannot change someone else's perspective. I cannot penetrate someone else's Way of being an assumed way of being and everything that they've learned and their conditioning I don't have the capacity to get through that. That's not my job and then so again what I was recognizing with this unconditional love teaching where I continue to allow myself to be in these relationships where I'm being abused. It's like letting someone put their cigarette out on my leg every single time I'm with them. And I can see they're not doing it on purpose. They're not doing it because they hate me. They're not trying to hurt me. It's that's what they know to do when they get triggered and they're scared and they get triggered and they're scared all the time. Whether I'm there or not, my mom is getting triggered and getting scared and she lashes out. And so I was realizing that the highest thing that I could get to within that relationship is getting really good at recovering from her putting her cigarette out on my leg every time. But then I started to recognize, okay, but that's now me 
allowing there to be chaos in my life, allowing there to be degradation of my being every single time I interact with her. And unconditionally loving her means I understand she doesn't seem to have control over this. She can't stop. Right now, in her way of being, in her mindset, and she cannot not put her cigarette out on my leg. That's unconditional love. I see it. She's not doing it on purpose. She's doing it from trauma. She's scared. She's hurting. Okay. I unconditionally love and accept that about her. She's not going to change. She can't change right now. So now, as an actual responsible adult, as an actual spiritual person, I need to say, does this relationship cause more chaos or more peace? Because that is the one thing I have to offer the world. The one thing I have control over is my vessel. And if I am allowing my vessel to be degraded and I have to clean up that mess every single time, I'm not creating. I'm not spending my time growing. I'm not spending my time evolving. I'm not spending my time expanding because I have to spend my energy cleaning up this mess, cleaning up the chaos that just happened. And at some point I recognized my own growth, my expansion, my awareness, my being able to step into higher versions of myself was being cut off because I had to spend my energy cleaning up what just happened every time I talked to my mom instead of going forward. I was blocked. I was literally now in a state of relative chaos that I could not become more ordered because now I'm spending my time every single day cleaning up a mess that's happening every single time I talk to her. So what happened was, again, I expressed to her that I understand that the way that she is is the way that she is and it's not her fault and all these things, but moving forward, this behavior is unacceptable. You cannot put your cigarette out on my leg anymore. And she decided not to have a relationship with me. I didn't cut her out, she cut me out. And from there, not having a relationship with her in the last year and a half, I have seen more about myself and grown and expanded and evolved in ways that I wanted for so long and could not get to. And it's because I'm not spending my time cleaning up that mess anymore. Instead of cleaning up that mess over and over and over again, I could go deeper and, and find much wider expanded ways of being peace. I have been able to go deeper inside and see these parts of myself that I have hated and that I have had shame about that, like I said, the shame about all of these things that had happened to me. And I've been able to say, okay, well, whoa, okay, all of that was not my fault. That was abuse. I was able to see the traumas that I went through. I was able to get mad. I was able to blame her and be not empathetic for her for a little while and just hate everything about her and just resent the shit out of what happened to me because I had to go through that phase. And I let myself completely go there and just because I had been making it all my fault for my whole life. All of my pain had been my fault. Everyone else's pain had been my fault. If I could just be better, if I could just be stronger, if I could just be more empathic, I just really thought I could make it all go away. So I had to swing the other way from that victim mentality of it's all my fault and there's nothing I can do about it and where I was being victimized because like I said I have no problem admitting that as a child I was dependent on her I needed her to provide for me and she didn't so I was a victim as a child and then just like in power versus force in the vibrational scale the next step from victim is anger and then sadness and so I went through all those phases and eventually you get to love and enlightenment and that's why I say you can't just choose love you have to go through all of the phases because choosing love is choosing to understand where you are now participating in chaos, where you are now participating in destruction, either through causing destruction or allowing somebody to destroy you and where you need to say no. So I needed to say no. I need to say there's a line. 
you can be triggered. You can be upset. You can have all these things. That's fine. You're not allowed to attack me. That's a line. You're not allowed to put your cigarette out on my leg anymore. And if you're not capable of not putting your cigarette out on my leg when we hang out, I love you unconditionally. I see that you are not doing that on purpose. You don't hate me. You're not a bad person. But I also see that you don't have the capacity not to put your cigarette out on my leg. And I'm going to stop expecting you to be different. And I'm going to say, okay, what do I need to do for myself so that this chaos is not happening in my life? Because at some point, like I say, when you really unconditionally love somebody, you understand the behaviors that they're going to do. You stop expecting them to do different behaviors. And then you say, okay, well, if that's causing destruction, I'm now participating willingly in that destruction. I am now a part of the problem. So saying you don't get to put your cigarette out on my leg, so I'm just not going to hang out with you. I love you. Unconditional love, conditional relating. If I have to clean up a mess every single time we hang out, I'm not going to hang out with you because I don't want to be cleaning up a mess every single time we hang out. I want to be growing. I want to be getting more peaceful. I want to be creating. And that has been what I have discovered in my own life. I don't hate my mother. I don't not have a relationship with her because I think she's a bad person. I love her unconditionally, but I conditionally relate because I am responsible for myself. And if I am complicit in destruction of myself, I am complicit in the destruction of everyone because it's all connected. I cannot sacrifice myself for the greater good of everyone. And that is why when we think we're going to love people, enough that they are not hurting anymore when they're attacking us and they're abusing us that is a false shadow spiritual teaching because that is not understanding that you can't love someone else that is not understanding that at the end of the day the only person whose love is going to save that person is their own love and that is the hardest lesson we are ever going to learn as adults who were wounded as children who didn't get what we needed as children. We are all still looking for that perfect love outside of ourselves. We are looking for it from everyone. We're looking for it from our parents. We're looking for it from our children. We're looking for it from our spouses, from our friends, from our coworkers, from society at large. We're constantly looking for this love and this approval that we didn't get as child, children. And now as an adult, we have to start to understand that, it, that it's over. The childhood is over. No one is ever going to love us perfectly enough to make us feel safe enough that we can be our full selves because that's why we want that love. That is what that love of a, that perfect love of a parent is I'm going to love you and provide for you no matter who and what you are and that gives us the foundation to grow into who and what we are supposed to be. That is what the healthiest thing would be but we didn't get it and now as adults it doesn't matter. We have to give it to ourselves now. Now as an adult the only love that matters is our own love for growing into who and what we need to be. That is the true enlightenment. That it is only my love that I need to feel safe enough to grow into who I really am. And I am never going to be able to give that love to somebody else enough that they feel whole. And no one is ever going to be able to love me enough that I feel whole. It has to come from me. And then I have to decide where is there chaos in my life that another person cannot cre not create that I am complicit to every time I relate with them and we start to say I unconditionally love myself and you enough to say this is chaos I'm not going to participate because at the end of the day the one thing I have control over is not you it's not loving you enough that you eventually see that you're a worthwhile person and you're not hurting anymore because that's what all of the empaths are doing. We're trying to love all these hurting people, letting them abuse us, thinking one day we're going to love them enough that they feel better and that's never going to happen. We have to love ourselves enough. We have to be a demonstration. We have to do it for ourselves. I love myself enough not to put myself in that position anymore and that is what I have to offer my mother. I'm showing her what it looks like. And that is 
unconditional love within conditional relating. I'm taking responsibility for myself. So I hope that that resonates with you. If not, that's okay. I'll see you in the next video.